He always takes his vacation here in Sonora. I'm kind of excited right now because I'm going to check out this projector that I picked up a couple days ago for the first time, a Bell & Howell 16mm Filmo Sound. It looks like it's kept this cover on most of its life, so it looks nice and clean inside. Sometimes they'll just be covered with dust. I was told uh, that this fires up. Now, if that means it it will run this film, that's an entirely different matter. So we're, we're gonna find out what fires up means. Um, there's a whole bunch of different styles of these filmo sounds, the Bell and Howells in these green cases. They're pretty fun. Each one is different and a little cool. And, uh, Here's the cord, so take a look at it and plug, plug that in. And if, if this was all dusty, I would blow it out and everything, but it looks nice and really nice and clean in there. Okay. So first things first is forward, it's plugged in. Ah, nice and smooth sound. Uh, what it should sound like is it should sound like a projector. And that just sounds like the motor running and uh, my guess is the belt has, has broken, has slipped, is stretched out or something. That's a belt problem. Forward, turn on the, the lamp. So there it is, That's that fires up, but here if we, Put these up. In forward, this should be spinning right now. Where is it? This guy up here. And in reverse, that should be spinning and it's not moving at all. So I am going to have to fix this thing before I can show you this film. Little disappointed, but that's pretty much what you can expect from an old, uh, Filmo sound, 16 millimeter. It needs a little bit of tender loving care after 40 years of, 30 years of not being used. Let's open this up. There's one, two, three, four flathead screws. And uh, down in the bottom, one, two, three Phillips head screws. So I'll take those out and uh, we'll take a look inside. I assume it's, it's, it's the belt. I went ahead and, and got a new belt for it before I ripped this apart, but we're going to take this off and we're going to see that the belt is slipped off. It's stretched out. It's broken. It's something. It's not working. Okay, once you pull the seven screws, um, the back comes off and it just slides along this cord. Just push the cord in. It'll slide along the cord. And I suspect we're going to find a broken... Oh, it's not broken. Here is the belt. And you see it's very... It's very loose, whatever. The rubber did not hold out. It looks in good condition. It's not cracked or anything, but it's just looser than loose. So it's stretched out. So that needs to be replaced. So right now we can just clip it with the clippers. Let me get that, just a minute. So here's the old belt. There's the new belt, and it, it should it should be just a little bit smaller. Yeah, so it looks like the right belt. 
Throw this old one away, and we'll put this one in. And here's the situation. Here's the motor. Motor shaft comes out, and the drive belt goes on that spindle right there, on the axle. Problem is, there's a big fan housing. You can't get it on, so we're going to have to deal with that somehow. So to get this side panel off, looks like there's a screw in the back that you get at it from the other side. Not this one, but down there. It's another screw. There's a corresponding one in the back. And we'll go around. You can figure it out. Go around and unscrew these screws. And the underside, there's a screw there and a screw there to be removed. Well, look, on top of this fan housing, there's a little bracket there. So I suspect if I get a little socket in there and remove that, that uh, I can pull on all these wires and have a lot more access. So let's try that. And with this, Wire removed now, it should give us a little bit more room to move this out of the way. So we're gonna wanna take off this fan housing. So it looks like we need to remove this uh, bolt there, one back there, there's one here. There might be a corresponding one on the other side. Uh, and it's all that same quarter inch socket. So do yourself a favor, make sure you have a quarter inch socket before you start doing this. Okay, so the fan housing has these little screws holding them in place. Okay, so there's four bolts holding this fan housing in place. Take this last one out. And... There's the squirrel cage inside, so we need to take that off now. Okay, this set screw here, there's one there. And there's a second one. One, two. And they're tiny, tiny, tiny Allen wrenches. I don't have one to fit that. So I think I'm gonna take off this screw and that screw and we'll be able to take this housing away and be able to slip the new belt over this fan, the little squirrel cage or whatever this is, uh, instead of taking that off. So here goes. And here's the moment of excitement to see if uh, this actually works. We are in uncharted territory here. So let's see if this fan housing, if I betcha I can now get the belt over the fan and fit it through the back side. So, do it over the fan, and then we're going to pull it out, and it should be on. I make sure it's not, whatever, it's catching on. There it is. There we go. Okay, so it's over the shaft. Very good. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, so now... I have to connect everything back together and then it has to go up and through. There's a wire here. See, that's a guide that's for like 24 frames per second and then 18 frames per second. So this is something that moves this over onto this thicker drive shaft and the thinner one. So anyways, but it's gonna have to go up through there and then up to the 
pulley up here, but that's... I'm not going to show you. I'm just going to reassemble everything and have it like it, was, like it was before. Only now, the belt is on this uh, pulley shaft. Oh, um, keep these loose as you're... All the different screws that have to do with this housing, keep them a little bit loose um, so you have jiggle room to, to fit them in each corner. It's, it, you need to be able to jiggle it a little bit. So then once you have all the screws in and finger tight, then go in and tighten them all up on the fan housing. And here's a word to the wise before you zip everything up. See all these electrical connections that I was pulling on? Looks like there's one, this yellow wire down here has come undone. And I have a, I don't see where it goes. I suspect it goes into a little hole back back in there but it's the yellow wire so I just cracked uh, the back of this old broken similar model this one's 1592 and this one is 1590 I think yeah so we're gonna look for that this looks completely different well, there you go, folks. Let me use these controls. Let's see. Forward works. Turns on the motor. Reverse works. Turns on the motor. Forward and... There, that should have turned on the lamp. Okay, so that yellow is powering the lamp. So that helps me to try to locate where I should put it back. Okay, if I look down inside this hole where this white lead is going up and I look in there I can see a, a tab so believe me that's where the wire goes and that's where I'm going to put the yellow wire and the lamp should start working again so there's that white that uh, yellow wire in place if I reach around and turn it on there's the motor and the lamp should come on okay Sure glad that I uh, remember to check all those wires before I zip this all back up together. That makes me happy. So here it is. Here's the belt on the motor. I'm gonna go up between these two wires up to this pulley up here. The pulley is, it's open on this end. It's a tight fit, so just get it up there. I'm not gonna show you, I'm just gonna I'm not going to show you and make the cuss words, but but uh, this needs to go up and be around that. So I'll see you in a few seconds. There, so I got the belt on now. So if I turn this on, reach around, turn it on, it should sound like a projector now. There it goes. That's a lot better. Let's look at the front. Okay, so in forward, here's here's where the film starts. It goes through the machine, gets pulled out here. When it's going, film is going forward. The back is reeling it up and picking it up. And in reverse, you want the film to go from here back to the front. There it is. Nice and strong, good torque. It should, if I hold it, it should, it keeps the film from ripping if there's a mistake, but yeah, it should be pretty firm. And there's the lamp. Let's zip her up and see if she can play a film. Well, let's try out this film. Film starts off going up this way. Take up reel is in the back. And let's see. Um, press this down to load it. 
basically. This is a self-loading. Um, down on the end, if the end is frayed, you stick it through a little clipper right here and, and it will cut you off a nice fresh flat end. Don't have to do that every time though. And let's feed it in here. And it should magically make it all the way through with loops, forms, and everything. There it goes. And it's coming out the back. Okay, so now, usually you, you can, on some, you pull on it a little bit. Yeah, pull on the, pull on this, on the film, or wiggle that, and it will loosen that up so the loops are all properly formed right there. Um, this, watch. That squeezes down, squeezes down, and tells the film right to where it's supposed to go. And then when you lift off, the film goes through unmolested, unscratched, etc. hopefully. Let's see. And now, do a little more. Let me grab you, camera. And on the take-up reel, oops, there's little slots. So you should be able to fit the film into a slot. Push it down. There. And it's ready to... Make sure it sounds good. There we go. Let's turn it around and watch this movie. Yes, I think Senor Duck can spare a moment. Daffy Duck here. What's your problem? 